welcome to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is James C. McNeil, president and founder of Digisplay. James, welcome to the show. Thank you. Or should I say Jim? You should say Jim. Okay, Jim. <laughs> Nobody well, calls well, me Well, welcome. James. You know, it's like we're family. But wait, we are. We are. How cool is that? A family of entrepreneurs. Exciting. And you keep the family tree. I do. I mm -hmm. do. That was a labor of love I started some time ago. And wow, I found out so many people in the family were entrepreneurs. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So we, ranging from uh, health care to mm -hmm. service organizations to legal to you pretty much name it, we've got people representing it. Wow. Where did, who's, um, who sort of started that path of entrepreneurship in our family? I think it goes back several generations. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, Benjamin, uh, that, that really sort of uh, at the top of the tree there, uh, was an entrepreneur himself and actually was involved in a number of different disciplines. Um, but I think everybody sort of picked up the bug. So mm -hmm. we've got a lot of family members involved. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, entrepreneurship really is something that once you're bitten, you, you stay you stay in it. Um, how about for you? I mean, I know that you spent some time in corporate, um, and then you became an entrepreneur. Tell me a little bit about the corporate experience. Uh, the corporate experience was the determining factor in why I became an <laughs> entrepreneur. So, you know, I, what I know is that it's not for everyone, and there are certain mm -hmm. people, for example, my wife is, is wonderful in that situation and knows how to negotiate that. I found some things out about myself that said, <laughs> it's really not the environment for me. And also, there was another factor which involved uh, me sort of being the square peg in the round hole in terms of dealing with my education. So I was trained as an architect uh, and minored in uh, structural engineering. And I sort of found that I was more technical than I was design oriented. Mm. But somehow, because of my, uh, my background in terms of the the educational part of it, I felt like I just needed to meander down that path anyway. So when I was in corporate, I was working for uh, corporate design firms mm -hmm. and drafting and drawing and, and I was always drawing somebody else's ideas, not my mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. At some point that didn't sit well with me. Okay. And I found a way to start to pay more attention to my actual skill set as, as opposed to what was going on with my educational skill set. So I started mm. paying attention to me right. and where my strengths were. And they were more on the technical side. So that's kind of where I started to veer off and say, you know, I'm probably not doing what's going to be my passion. I better follow what I really enjoy. And that started to get me more involved. Met a few other consultants, mm -hmm. liked what I saw with that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. I started as a consultant, a technology consultant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, well that's significant. Now consulting can really range from feast to famine. Um, when you started as a technical consultant, which, which end of that spectrum it were you on? It, it was closer to famine in okay. the beginning. <laughs> it definitely was. It was a difficult time early on and I had to make some decisions about mm -hmm. uh, whether I was going to stay the course or not. But I had a few really good breakthroughs and they were very confidence building and I, I think that's part of what has to happen. You've got to have a success story that makes you feel like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. I really can do this. Mm -hmm. And I did have that happen. So as it turned out, a lot of my clients early on were architects. Ah, and that sort of helped me bridge the gap. Right. So I became their technology whisperer, their translator. Ooh. So I was able to, to speak about it because I knew the vernacular of the practice. But I also knew the technology really well. And I, I would almost describe myself in, as a savant in terms of the technology because I don't have as much training in that, uh, formal training, as I did the architecture side. Mm -hmm. But um, that's where my passion is. Mm. And I'm just one of those gadget people. I collect stuff. I have things back from, you know, 40 years ago. 40? 40 years Wait, ago. Wait, that was when technology was born. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're really right. And, you know, and that, that was part of what, helped me with the transition too was the mm -hmm. timing of things. So mm -hmm. you figure the PC was really born in about 80. And I mean the personal computer, not mm -hmm. the computer. Right. right. And I needed that. That kind of snapped me out of it. As it worked out, the timing of that was right when I was finishing up my undergraduate degree. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't had any formal training in, while I was in school with the computer because it wasn't born yet. Right. I learned to draw on the board. I, mm -hmm. I did everything manually. 
But as soon as I got my hands in the technical side of things and the automation side of things, that, tra that changed everything. Wow. And I, I really loved it, love it to this day. I don't even look at it as work, mm -hmm. and that's what helps ah, me get through. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing the passion, I'm hearing the purpose. Well, tell me a little bit more about your business. Um, take me back your, your name, Digisplay mm -hmm. LLC. Why that name? What does it mean to you and your customers? You know, uh, for that part of it, and I've, I've really created a number of businesses, and mm -hmm. it's a, it, they've all kind of evolved as things change. So mm -hmm. I started out doing desktop publishing and uh, when that was a fad, and then I moved into doing just technical consulting in general and networking and things like that. And now we're into the digital signage phase of the business. We've been doing that since '03. The first business in digital signage that I worked out was called Ads in Motion because we thought that what was going to happen was going to be more advertising based, mm -hmm. but it was not. So I changed the name to Digisplay, which is sort of a, a fusion of digital and display, as mm -hmm. it's supposed to be that obvious. You're supposed to pick it up, right, but right. still many I people don't it. know what it I is. Got it. And uh, so that's where the name came from, and we started focusing on all that that could be. And it really kind of started with the advent of the flat screen television, which, ha mm. which happened in 97. Mm -hmm. It seems like it maybe was longer than that, mm -hmm. uh, that further back than that, but that's really when the flat screen started to emerge. Well, that looks like a sign. Yes. And, and yes. the connection was made and people started saying, well, rather than just showing it as a television, there are other things we can do with this. That's how it emerged. Mm -hmm. And so we started getting involved with, well, what, what can the content be? What should show up on those screens? Mm -hmm. And there's a wide array of things, and that's what makes this very interesting, is that it can be still images, it can be video, it mm -hmm. can be advertising. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, key performance indicators for a corporation, like, you know, how many phone calls do we have we taken in today if you're oh, managing a call center? Sure. All sure. those things that used to be what we call dashboard information yes. for, well, now we're putting them out there so that multiple people can see them, and the digital signage industry affects that. So there's, there are a lot of areas. It's still evolving. That mm -hmm. keeps it exciting for me. Right. It also puts me in a sphere where I'm dealing with people a lot younger than me ah. who are keeping me a little younger and, okay. Okay. and showing me aspects of, of programming and, and new uh, techniques and technology that I ordinarily wouldn't have. So that's how I formed my team. Mm -hmm. So I have six other people that work with me oh, in the point. business, mm -hmm. uh, and each of them brings a unique aspect to the mm. business, which I just love. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, entrepreneurship, I think initially people start their business and say it's going to be all about me. I'm going to, you know, forget corporate. I'm going to do my own thing, be my own boss. Mm -hmm. And as a business evolves, it really is about the team and forming, deciding who your customer is and, and forming that right group so that you can provide the services that your customers are asking for. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, that that's exactly what happened here. And mm -hmm. To, again, to keep it fresh, I mean, you can get tired of yourself after a while. <laughs> I, I can talk to myself a little bit, but not too long. Okay. And, and so I needed the input and the, the, the repertoire, the back and forth with the guys and the people who are involved makes it much more exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, adds a, a vitality to it that normally wouldn't be there if I was just working by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that, and then, and it's people in general. I mean, the, pe the clients as well, that's a part of the mix. Um, seeing different management styles, you know, if you're right. in a corporation, you pretty much deal with whatever's there. Mm -hmm. But as a consultant, I get to see a lot and meet a lot of different people, see different styles, and then try to map the solution based mm -hmm. on what they're showing me and what their vision is. Right. And that's fun too. So right. all of these things are things I like to do. Right. I yeah. see the smile. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it. I really does. do. I mean, I. Totally cool. This is probably pretty sad, but at my own home, I have a little lab, and <laughs> and I do. I've seen that lab. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I, I. Uh, that's how much I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, I really do. It doesn't feel like work to me, mm -hmm. which is why when I think about retirement, I don't know how that's going to happen because mm -hmm. I enjoy it too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty cool. <laughs> Tell me about results. Tell me about some of the things that you're really proud to display and your team has done. You know, one of the most exciting projects we were involved with uh, was with a client. It's a medical supply manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, Becton Dickinson is the name oh, of the company. Okay. Big and, and they put out the, a need for a, um, a virtual museum. Mm. Interesting sounding concept. They wanted to be able to tell their history and their story, but they wanted to use automation to do it. And they just put it out there at large. They put out an RFQ and said, mm. somebody come up with it. Mm. 
-hmm. So we threw our hat in the ring with about 15 other companies and we went through, it took a year, mm -hmm. but we won the job. We wow. won this job oh, and, and it was uh, a very interesting, it took my whole team, everybody had input. That's just really exciting and it ended up being successful enough so that it was shipped, the solution was shipped all over the world. It's in mm. Japan, it's in China, Germany, uh, France, uh, a number of locations in the U.S. and, totally and Spain. Cool. It was it was wonderful, uh, and it they use it. You know, I think we created this about five years ago, and mm -hmm. they're still using it, wow. uh, which is also something that's special because technology doesn't usually last that long. It's usually right. a three-year window for things, and you're done. Well, and as you mentioned earlier, it's the technology, but it's also the content. And so you and your team are able to customize the content based on their specifications that's so absolutely. that it's content that's valuable to them. It, it is. And if it's about their history and their museum, right. that should last for a while. Y you're right. Totally and that's the, cool. you're, you're right. That's, that's the, the cue you have to pick up. Right. You have to make sure right. that, you know, you don't automate for automation's sake. You right. automate because somebody has a vision and you've got a problem to solve. Right. And, and that's, that's where we put all of our effort. That is cool. Now I'm looking down. I know that you brought something with you, so I want to make sure you have a chance to share that. With I us. did. I, okay. You know, this w this represented sort of a crossroad for me mm -hmm. when I was still involved with architecture, but starting to move more towards technical. Mm -hmm. And it was when CAD technology, computer aided oh, design, right. took off, which right. is the perfect. Con um, it's the perfect fusion between design and automation, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, I was trained on the board, mm -hmm. but now all of a sudden you can draw on the computer. So I immersed myself in this and moved so quickly with it that a couple of people took notice and said, you should start writing a technical paper. Oh so my goodness. This goes. This is dated <laughs> May of 1985. I think I was 25 or something like that. And, right. and, uh, and not many people knew that much about the technology, but mm -hmm. I was living it night and day, and mm -hmm. so I presented this paper in front of the Secretary of the Navy at that time, John Lehman, uh, in New York, and got in front of audiences that I had no idea it would reach that far, but it was received well. Mm -hmm. And that represented sort of a launching point to me looking at technology as more my path than just straight architecture. Mm -hmm. So it's significant to me. That is yeah. significant. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love it. And I always love it when I hear that word significant again. So, Jim, I know that people want to get in touch with you. How can they get in touch with you? Uh, our website is the main uh, way to get a hold of us, and mm -hmm. it's www.digisplay, D I G I S P L A Y, digisplay.com. Mm -hmm. And there are some, uh, some pictures and images and media out there that show you kind of the things that we do. But again, it's such a wide range that the the website doesn't really do an adequate job. So, you know, I, I only want that website out there so that we can talk to you. you right, know, That's right. the better way you, to communicate. You are a talker and a great listener. Um, cousin to cousin, I, I can affirm that. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Fran, thanks so much for having me. Oh, it is so cool to have family and, you know, just to kind of hear where people are and yeah. what they're doing. So it is time for us to wrap up. The 15 minutes went so quickly. Um, and I, again, am really glad that you're here. Thank you. And, and I want to tell you, too, I appreciate all that you've done. And you're you. being this wonderful connector. This, mm -hmm. is, this is awesome. Thanks. Yeah, well, you know, my sisters often say, Franny, they call me Franny. No one else can, just for the record. <laughs> um, we know you're the big sister, but that doesn't mean you're in charge. And so one of the Ooh. nice things about media is I get to ask the questions and listen. And I think they'll be surprised to hear that I actually can listen. <laughs> so <laughs> significant stories, that's what it's all about. Significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil. Join us for our next episode. Thank you.